everybody, Pete Meyer with Southern Biker TV here with you. I uh, just got finished doing a whole lot of work to the 09 FLH. If you watched the last video, you know that we were dealing with a noise that we ended up tracing to the transmission. So we had to rip quite a bit apart. Um, everything on the left side, the uh, outer and inner primary, um, and then on the right side, had to drop the exhaust in order to access the, uh, the side door for the tranny, get the transmission out. I was very pleasantly surprised though that it looked like the new main shaft design had already been installed in this bike sometime in its past. Uh, not too surprising because it is such an issue with that, uh, that inner primary bearing. But uh, the transmission looked in really good shape. There was very little wear and tear on the dogs, on the mating gears. Uh, all looked really good. So all I had to do was go in and replace that main shaft drive gear support bearing that's located in the left side of the transmission case. And then we had to put everything back together. Now, got a chance to make some upgrades um, on the bike um, rather than uh, putting it back together the way it came apart. First thing I decided to do, since the exhaust had to come off, uh, I switched that out for a set of Vance & Hines Super Radius pipes. Um, really nice looking pipes. Uh, sounds really good, uh, even with the baffles in them. <laughs> and it's tempting, believe me, to take the baffles out but you're really going to sacrifice horsepower instead of gaining any horsepower by doing so. Uh, of course, uh, running those pipes, you absolutely have to use some type of aftermarket fuel control to, to reset the fuel mixture uh, across the operating range. You can go back and check the video on the fuel pack uh, that, that I purchased for the 09. Uh, all we had to do is go in and set in new uh, map that was sent to us by Vance and Hines. That took care of that. Now over on the left side, a little more involved. Uh, one of the big things with the uh, transmission bearings, uh, the inner primary bearing and then that support bearing, uh, a lot of people believe it's the automatic chain tensioner on the twin cams causing the issue. And from what I heard, uh, the idea is that because it's automatic, it takes up the slack anytime there's slack in the chain. Sometimes when you're accelerating, decelerating, you can get some slack in the chain that it takes up and then it doesn't give back and it actually runs the chain too tight. That puts a lot of load. Uh, on that main shaft, a lot of side load, and of course that's transferred to the bearings. Uh, if you look very closely, if you have that kind of noise and you suspect that kind of problem, when you remove the clutch, uh, the, the outer basket, look for any sign of contact where the ring gear has, has rubbed against the inner primary. If you see that, absolutely the main shaft is bent. And you gotta go in and replace that along with the bearing repair. So I decided, we, number one, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of the automatic change tensioner. I used a Baker Attitude Adjuster manual tensioner. Uh, hey, it's, it's the same thing I had on the soft tail. It's part of maintenance. It's not that big a deal to adjust. In fact, it's easier to adjust the Baker unit than it is the old stock unit because the splines are much closer together. It gives you a lot more control over just how much free play you put in there. The other thing I did while I was in there is got rid of the compensator sprocket woes. Um, you know, when you shut the bike off and it wants to kick back a little bit or it's hard to start or tries to kick out, uh, these are all signs that the compensator sprocket is no good. And in fact, they're not very good to begin with. So I replaced that with an Evolution 30 tooth uh, hard gear and uh, really like the difference. There's none of that kickback. Starting is very quick and easy. It's actually smoother than it was with the compensator sprocket on there. Is a little vibration, but again, this is a Harley V twin. Yeah, there's no dampening there what the compensator sprocket was there for. So you're going to get a little bit more than normal, but again, it's, it's the nature of the beast. It's not that big a deal. Uh, and on the clutch side, hey, Barnett Scorpion clutch. Uh, why? You know when you hit that first gear and you get that Harley clunk in the gear? Well, you don't have to have that. The way you get rid of that is to get rid of the diaphragm spring the factory uses and go back to individual springs like the Barnett and others use. Uh, that gets rid of that. And what I liked about the Barnett clutch setup is it came with three different spring sets light, medium, and hard so that you could tailor it to fit your specific needs. I don't have a high horsepower engine. It's a stock motor with an aftermarket exhaust. I'm not really hard on the bike. I tried the middle range springs and opted to replace those with the lighter springs only because it makes that much that, that much easier to ride. The, the, the feel now of that clutch is, the only way I can describe it is like a hot knife through butter when you're shifting. There's no clunkiness to it. Neutral is very easy to find. Uh, it's just a very, very smooth shifting transmission now. It's, just, it's like a whole new bike. So there you go. Um, look for the blog on uh, Southern Micro TV and uh, look for some information on a new stuff that we got coming up. Uh, that's the DIY Garage. Uh, stick around for information on that coming soon. 
Did you enjoy the video you just watched? Did you find it helpful? We sure hope so. If you did, make sure you give us a thumbs up and you add your comments to that section right below the player there. And don't forget to share our videos with your Harley riding friends. Once you got all that taken care of, if you want to make sure that you're the first to know about any new videos that we put up online, hit that subscribe button for us. Thanks for watching.